G'day everyone, it's Joe Sweeney here from Story Weaver Games and today I'm going to show you a little bit of a, a different thing in mapping. Um, this is really just a casual uh, discussion of, of how I do some of my star mapping inside Photoshop rather than Campaign Cartographer. Um, we, when we put forward the first high space book, uh, the print rushes uh, to our members, some of them came back and pointed out a few errors and also some things which they would like to see, some differences. So we've been busy uh, uh, for the last month and a half uh, really trying to address all of those things. We also put the book back into uh, a complete re-edit. Um, so uh, basically the quality wasn't high enough and we really want to make sure people get a good job. Now, my role of course is artwork, layout, mapping, etc. And one of the things that was requested is that we name the various arms of the Milky Way that the Pandominium, this massive galactic empire, actually crosses over. Um, so originally the map uh, that we put forward just looked like this, um, but uh, definitely uh, people did want to see the names for Orion arm, the Perseus arm, and the Sagittarius arm, which are in fact the actual names of arms of our galaxy. Now if we look at our galaxy, uh, we are not a Many people think we're a spiral galaxy. We are apparently a spiral bar galaxy. We are sitting in the middle of two other arms, so sort of like a, an arm inside an arm. And the arm that we're in is called the Orion Spur. We're smack bang in there. Sagittarius arm sits on our inside, and the I believe that the Perseus arm sits on the outside of us. So we need to put labels onto this um, uh, diagram here. Now, when I created this, we actually originally sat down and we did a mathematical uh, modeling on a spreadsheet of where all the planets would roughly be in relation to each other. Um, not 100% of that was translated accurately into real science, but, but you know we, we did start with a science base. Uh, that then led to a projection of that spreadsheet, would you believe, into Campaign Cartographer. And you can see this is the layout here with the various arms and the, the, the locations that were actually done in Campaign Cartographer. Uh, not the prettiest map in the world, which is why I used it as an overlay for this map, which is done in Photoshop. Um, so what we really now need to do is place a, the, uh, the, a label for Orion Spur in here. We need uh, the Sagittarius uh, goes across the top. Actually, I'll just double check that. It's either Sagittarius. Um, no, that's the Perseus. The Sagittarius is on the inside. So the Sagittarius runs here. There's our galactic star core, where the weird starfish come from. You'll have to get the book to find out what they're all about. Anyway, um, the first thing that you always do when you're creating a very complex map like this uh, in uh, Photoshop is always make use of groups. So um, if you're not familiar with Photoshop, please get familiar with groups. I'll give you an example. If I were to turn off this group, the sector graphics, all of those little blue dots would disappear. And the reason I place them all in their own layer is then I can apply uh, common effects across all of them. They'd all be faded to the same level, etc., etc. Uh, but also, it means that um, I can just move this sector, uh, this sector graphics group, to a lower layer in Photoshop, and it drops behind all the planets, behind all the Wormgate lines. That's those funny little lines you see there. Um, you've got the Wormgate line layer. You can switch that on or off. Now that's really useful because it might be nice to do, for example, a map that only has the systems in it. Bingo sectors. Easy. Uh, and then we've got a very large um, selection of uh, layers, for example, the title and all the planets and the labels. Within this group, we actually list subgroups. So for example, we could uh, turn on and off a specific planet. That's that little fella down there, turning him on and off, including the label. So um, make sure that when you're working with maps that you do pay attention to groups which means I want some big, bold uh, labels for these, these galactic arms to come along here, but they need to sit behind all of the rest of the map. Otherwise, you're, not, you're just not going to be able to read it. And they really need to fade into the background. So in order to do that, I am going to do the following. The first thing I'm going to do is I probably want them to fit above the sector graphics, but underneath the worm gate lines and underneath all that. So I need to put a new layer in here. I'm just gonna, uh, sorry, a new group. <laughs> I'm going to uh, click on the group here. Here's my group one, and I'm gonna call this Galactic Arm um, Names. There we go. I'm gonna move this group 
in between those two. Now, you've got to be really careful with Photoshop as you're moving it. If you see it sort of uh, making that strange little line there, it means that will drop inside another group. You don't want that. You've actually got to get it so it makes the very fine line between the two groups Oop, and leave it there. Bingo. Now, let's put our first piece of text in. Text, click somewhere on the map, and I'm going to type in Orion's. I'll just make sure I get the actual technical name of it. Is it Orion's Spur? Yes, it is Orion's Spur. Or Orion or Orion's? Just Orion. Okay. Orion Spur. Now, if we look at that piece of text there, uh, it's probably a little bit small, so let's boost it up to 72 point. Yeah, we'll start with that. Um, I also should make sure, just so that we know that it, it is in a consistent font with everything else. We're using Zag Bold. It's a, it's a nice, clean, sci-fi looking font. Fonts make all the difference in your maps, guys. Please <laughs> pay attention to fonts and if need be, go and buy, you know, invest in actually buying good fonts. Um, I am now going to move that roughly to where I want it, which will be around here. And then I'm going to rotate it. To do that, I'm going to select the marquee tool. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go freeform. And I'm going to then hold the shift key and just turn this in five degree increments until it's roughly about right. And then I'm going to push enter. That locks that into place. Um, you can see the text is way too bold for this, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Let's just get the text in place first. Then you go to type and I want to warp this text. Now, when you click on the warp text function, there's a whole range of different ways that you can warp your text. An arch would be, a, 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 would seem to be a fairly obvious one, but I'm actually going to go for something called the arch, which creates more of this sort of three-dimensional squish. I don't know how to describe it. Anyway, it's, it's, it's quite a nice effect for this map. And I'm just going to turn that down, not so much. There we go, about, about so big. There we go, and let's move that to roughly where I think it should be. Um, where Sol is the Solara system, so let's run it down in through here. Let's remove that arm along there. Right, that's got that done. Maybe further down. Okay, let's do the next piece of text. And this one is going to be called Sagittarius. I'll just make sure. Um, I'll just make sure that I've actually got that spelling right. Again, oh, my spelling is dreadful. Sagittarius arm. Yes, I think I got it right. It's a miracle. Just ask, uh, just, just ask Ray, our editor. Um, Free transform. Spin it. Now the Sagittarius arm is going to run along here. So once we've got it roughly in place, we can then go image, uh, sorry, text, warp text, and let's do the arch. There we go. Okay, and we'll, uh, we'll just bring that down so it's not quite so much. That's good. That looks fine. I'm going to click on OK, and we'll just bring him down through there. There we go. Perfect. Okay, and the final arm is going to be the Perseus arm. Let's just go and bring that up, make sure I get the spelling correct. Correct. Uh, yep, Perseus above us. Perfect. Again, grab the text. And let's move him roughly into place. Let's use the free transform to rotate him roughly to how we want. And then enter, type, warp the text, arch. Yeah, that's way too much. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's move him down a little. Excellent. Okay. So there are the uh, the, the labels for our galactic, uh, galactic arms. I might just actually rotate that Perseus a slight bit more. There we go. Excellent. Okay. Now, um, they're now way bright when they're just totally in our face. Um, and that's fine. One of the great things with Photoshop, and I really love this feature, is that by group you can set um, 
uh, effects so blending effects so if I click on that group I can go blend effect options and I can make simply and I'll move this over here so you can see me doing it I can just make those really fade into the background and I want them to be very very light because otherwise they're going to overpower the rest of the information they're really there as a ghost so that you can see that this is you know a, a galactic spanning empire Fantastic. So look, that's that's uh, a quick um, update on, on how you can uh, add labels and you know, curve text and so forth, use layers in, in Photoshop. So I hope you've enjoyed that. It's um, If you've got questions, uh, again, about C Campaign Cartographer or about uh, Photoshop mapping or any of these issues, give me a buzz uh, um, on Facebook or you can email me um, at uh, grandmaster at storyweavergames.com. Um, also, please make sure that you sign up to the master mapping class. That's go.storyweaver.com slash master mapping. It's free. I'm putting all my videos there in an organized manner. And uh, this one will go up there shortly. Thanks a lot, guys. Catch you later.